Right now, a bus filled with Miami-Dade teachers is on the way back from immersing in Florida history, specifically African-American Florida history, learning firsthand about racist atrocities black citizens endured a century ago in Ocoee and in Rosewood. The tour is led by professor, author, and South Florida historian Marvin Dunn. Few people know black history in Florida as intimately, and few have been more outspoken against the new Florida standards than Dr. Dunn. Marvin Dunn, great to see you. What, you're, where are you? You're in the forest somewhere? We are in Rosewood, Florida. We are on the Dunn property, five acres of undeveloped land in Rosewood. And I'm here with 30 Miami-Dade County teachers supported by the UTD and my own nonprofit, the Miami Center for Racial Justice. We just got here about an hour ago and we're walking the railroad track that was used to evacuate some of the black people during the massacre 1923. In Rosewood, and we will talk about that in just a minute, part of the tour that uh, you've been doing these tours for, for years. I think you might have stopped at one point, but, but is this tour, I mean, what's different about this? Is this ramping up again as a, a backlash, an antidote, a response to the debate over the new African-American history standards? Yes, this tour is different because there are teachers here with me this time. I normally bring high school, high school students and their parents or grandparents, but this is a tour for Miami-Dade County teachers, and we're here to impress upon these teachers the truth about Rosewood and about Okoe, where we were yesterday, so that they don't pass on the lies that the state standards now want them to teach, that there are black people who, who committed racial violence against white people in Rosewood and in Okoe. Did not happen. These teachers are here to learn the truth. I'm so grateful that they're here. And so I want to dig into a little bit uh, about exactly specifically that, because there are really two things that have really been under debate in these standards. One of them is a line in the middle school curriculum about how enslaved people developed skills that might be used for their own personal benefits, and we talked so much about that. And the other one, to your point, is when discussing the massacres, racist massacres, a century ago in Ocoee and Rosewood, the line is about learning about violence against and by African Americans. And to your point, the historic record shows there was no violence by African Americans in Ocoee nor Rosewood, that they were the victims of that. And, and I wonder if the language, rather than the sentiment, the language is really what the issue is here, because nothing's been taught yet. There, there has been no practical lessons taught yet. What do you think about that? It's both the language and the sentiment. There's no place in Florida history that I know of where black people committed racial violence against whites. And the state of Florida is telling our teachers to equivocate the history of racial violence in Florida. Everybody was doing it. Blacks did it, whites did it, and it did not happen. Mr. Sylvester Carey, who was the hero of Rosewood, defended his family by killing two of the mob members who came onto his porch. And that's now considered anti-white violence by blacks. We're here to set the record straight. The state of Florida does not want to face up to the violent history of race in Florida. And we're here to teach these teachers the truth. And Dr. Dunn, why do you think that is? I mean, the, you know, we know many of the people who wrote the standards, who are overseeing the standards, many of them, a significant number of them are African-Americans. Why, why would Florida educators want to sugarcoat or whitewash, why would they want to do that? Why, what would because that intention a, be? Because it's a very, very violent history. And the fact that they have these few black Republicans, these extremist black Republicans, one of whom said Jews own everything, one of whom said, I'm, I thank God for slavery. I could have been in Africa worshiping a tree. These are folks that DeSantis is listening to on his, for his black scholars. He's not listening to us. He's listening to his hand-picked extremist Republican black members of the, of, the, of the party. What do you think, you know, the, we've reported on these standards for weeks now. There's elementary, there's middle, there's high school. In the elementary school curriculum, there is no discussion of enslaved people or slavery. There is a curriculum about great African-Americans in Florida history. Um, and that, that got me to wondering what do you think is the right age for, for kids, for students, to learn about atrocities and horrors and racism like that? I think by middle school, 
most kids are able to handle this. Think about what they have on TikTok available to them. Yes. So middle school. But I'm concerned about lower grades. Right now we got this Prager University ultra right uh, organization offering videos to kids to the schools that teach Columbus was telling the slaves, telling people that it was better to be enslaved than to be killed. Columbus is telling that uh, to current day kids on a video at Prager University. That's the kind of thing that we're opposed to. We want the truth taught, not a slanted one way version. I don't know if you've been able to see a letter that had been written by one of the people who was on that work group who wrote the curriculum. Um, I'm, I'm just going to guess by his name. He's a social studies teacher. He's a veteran. He's a father. I'm guessing he's Hispanic uh, just by his name. And he had Rob, Roberto Fernandez is his name. He wrote a letter to the Department of Education, to Manny Diaz, the Secretary of Education, asking to revisit, being actually very complimentary of the work that he and his colleagues have done, uh, very proud of the work, but saying it needs to be made better uh, in response to this obvious outcry and disgust and horror by so many people, recommending that the work group go back and make it better. Would you advocate for that? No, not that crowd. No, 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 no. Go back and make it better, but don't use those stooges. Don't use those Republican hand-picked extremists. No, 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 no. Go back and revisit, but get people who have the capacity to give the input that the state needs right now in this crisis. And that's not those folks that DeSantis put on this committee, on that workforce group, as he called it. You know, the last time we were together on this program, it was before the standards were written. It was like uh, last year, I want to say. And, and it was, uh, the state was and the legislature was forming some of the rules that framed the guidelines for why these new curriculums were curricula were written and you had said then that you wouldn't do one thing to change one word one thought one iota of the things you've been posting to the governor about your own black history and your family's history and i wonder if you've ever gotten a response from the governor or from the education department or anybody I wrote the governor and Manny Diaz a letter months ago asking what am I going to be allowed to teach or not teach to my university colleagues that I'm training in black history. Never got a response from either person. I was so disappointed that Manny Diaz canceled his appearance in Miami because I wanted to ask him some of those questions. The governor never responded to anything I've sent to him. A lot of people would like to hear them respond for sure. Dr. Marvin Dunn and the group of teachers behind you in the woods. This might be one of the coolest live remotes we've had on no, this I week in South so Florida. <laughs> and uh, hi, yes. everyone. And I'm really appreciative that you all stopped for us to do this. And we'll uh, safe trip home. Thank you. See Take you. Care.